Uh, the Carillon study is um, an FDA approved exploration of the morbidity and mortality benefits of the Carillon mitral valve contour system um, in patients with heart failure due to, due to reduced ejection fraction. So functional mitral regurgitation is actually fairly common in patients with heart failure due to reduce, reduced ejection fraction. The more you look, the more you'll find. And for a long time, we haven't looked very closely because we've had no specific independent treatment for this. So the management of patients has been largely based around medical therapy and electronic device therapy pacemakers if there's conduction tissue delay. What we now have is a series of devices coming onto the market that are actually specifically designed to reduce functional mitral regurgitation. And so we're now looking for it much more. Now, we're a little bit away from it becoming standard of care that you might treat every patient with functional mitral regurgitation with, an, with a device. But absolutely, in those patients who have ongoing symptoms, despite optimal medical therapy, this is certainly something you should consider. And we are learning more, and as, as every month goes by, we're firming up our knowledge about who is and who isn't indicated and who is and isn't going to benefit. And of course, one of the options that we now know much more about, in addition to the clipping procedure, which focuses on the leaflets, we now have more information about annular treatments, specifically relatively non-invasive annular treatments that can be um, delivered through the coronary sinus um, as, as the Carillon system is. And we have long believed that the relationship between the coronary sinus and the mitral annulus is an opportunity. And it's not until very recently that we have solid data that you, taking this opportunity with this relatively minimally invasive device leads to objective reduction in mitral regurgitation and beneficial remodeling. One of the hugely interesting things that we've seen in the reducer from our study is that in addition to demonstrating clear reductions in mitral regurgitation, we have also shown that the device sets in place a process, albeit gradual, of a change in the structure and function of the left ventricle. And this is the first time this has been shown clearly in a non-surgical mitral procedure for functional mitral regurgitation. We see changes in the left ventricular size, and those are then reflected in left ventricular ejection fraction. And the reason this is important is because if you look at all of the surrogate endpoints that we currently use in heart failure, Left ventricular remodeling is the single most powerful surrogate endpoint that very frequently relates to benefits in outcomes, hard patient-orientated outcomes down the line. So the Carillon study will tell us definitively whether the beneficial changes in mitral regurgitation and left ventricular structure and function translate to benefits for patients. Remember, patients don't come to me saying, my ventricle is dilated and I have mitral regurgitation. They come to me saying, I'm breathless, fatigued, and I had a hospitalization last week. How can I prevent that from happening again? And the Carillon study is designed such that we are exploring the long-term benefits on hard outcomes, hospitalization and mortality in this group of patients but we'll also have more information than ever before on other things that are important to patients, including symptoms and exercise capacity. The REDUCE FMR study was unusual, unique. Not only was it the first ever randomized, double-blind, sham controlled trial in this field, but it also included a subpopulation of patients with moderate mitral regurgitation. Prior to this, we had information from COAPT and Mitra FR around people with quite marked mitral regurgitation. But reduced FMR included people with less severe mitral regurgitation. Despite this, we showed improvements in mitral regurgitation and left ventricular dimensions. 
And so what we now have is an evolving situation, which many physicians will think is logical. That if you have a procedure that is low risk, that is relatively quick, and that is acceptable to patients, you may want to treat patients with moderate mitral regurgitation before they get severe mitral regurgitation and all of the adverse remodeling and the disadvantages that that brings to the syndrome of heart failure.